Hi, kiddos. Welcome back. I've got my shared reading book ready to go. We are moving right through this book. I'm excited because that means we're closer to another book. And I like reading books. All right. So we've got How Full Is Your Bucket? We left off last time on this really awesome list of you deserve true friends, too. Here's how you'll know them. So go ahead and get your book. Open up to page 34, 34 in the raindrop. It looks like this. You can pause my video to grab your book. And then when you're ready, come back and hit play and we can keep going, okay? You deserve true friends, too. Here's how you'll know them. This is important. As an adult, I know that it's really important to have true friends. It's nice to have those people to lean on when you're having a hard day or something. They motivate you to accomplish your goals. They share common interests with you, but expose you to new ones too. That means if you're interested in a sport, they like it too, but then they're also going to say, hey, let's go watch this other sport too. They stand up for you even when you're not around. So if someone's talking about you behind your back, they're gonna say, hey, I don't like that. That's my friend. They give you a boost when you're feeling down. This is really important. Things can be really tough, and so it's really nice to have a friend that's going to say, it's okay, you've got this. You're amazing. They listen to you. They give you honest advice to help navigate the pros, that's the positives, and cons, the negatives of a decision or situation. I do this a lot when there's something, a big decision or something that's happening, and I want to make a pros things that are positive about it and a cons list, that's really important. And that's something my little sister and I are best friends. And so we'll always say, hey, have you made a pro and con list? In fact, I just told you that the other night. They are happy to see you become friends with other people. They're okay with sharing you because they know you'll still be friends. They steer you to be your best. I like this. I'm going to do little hearts on this page because it's all about friends and caring for you. You could go ahead and you could maybe do the title here if you wanted to trace those raindrops, the little bucket drops you could, your choice. It's your book, which is cool, but I like this page, so I know that it's important for me. Best friends forever. Many kids enjoy having close friends, and there is nothing wrong with that. But sometimes kids can get caught up in having a BFF. Their whole world revolves around that one person. But the term best friend forever shouldn't mean that you have to limit yourself when it comes to relationships with others. It shouldn't mean that your friends have to limit themselves to you either. One person can't possibly be everything to you, and you can't always be everything to someone else. That's a lot of pressure. Over time, people change, and so do their interests. While it's wonderful to have that one friend you can always depend on and grow and learn with, hanging out with other kids is important too. So my sister and I are best friends, but she still has other friends that she considers kind of like best friends and or just good friends. And I have the same thing because like it said, sometimes you just need someone else besides that one person. They can't be everything. That's a lot of pressure. Are you being a true friend? I like this. I like getting to pick it. Pick the best response to each situation below. And we get to circle it in our book. There's a new kid at school. During lunch, you want to introduce yourself to him. But your friend says, we have enough friends. Why bother? Plus, I heard he's weird. You, A, agree and stay where you are. Or B, kindly say that you'd still like to meet him and head over to introduce yourself. I know that whenever we have new teachers in the building, I always like to introduce myself and say hi and make them feel welcome. It's tough being in a new place. I know because once upon a time, I was new here. So I'm going to pick B. Your friend was just made captain of a team. She's really excited and wants to talk about nothing else. You, A, gossip behind her back about how she always has to be the center of attention and doesn't really deserve to be captain. B, tell her how happy you are for her and recognize the time and effort she put into achieving her goal. I know that sometimes I may have done something like that, maybe because I'm a little bit jealous of someone, but I know that I really should do B. 
tell them I'm really happy for them. Your best friend just had a terrible fight with one of your other friends, but you are really focused on your upcoming vacation. You, A, listen to her side of the story and offer positive advice. B, interrupt her boring story to tell your exciting news. Ooh. How would I feel if someone did that? Ooh, I would not like that. My story isn't boring. I like A. Listening is really important. Two ears, two times the listening. Been talking, one mouth, two ears. That's what I was always taught. Number four, you want to play tennis, but your friend wants to play roller hockey. She has a big tournament coming up and wants to be prepared. You, A, call it a day and go your separate ways. B, come up with a plan to spend some time playing both sports. Oh, definitely. Definitely try to play both. And that takes us to chapter four, show you care. Ooh, I peeked. All right, guys, next time that means that we'll do chapter four. If you are reading ahead, don't tell me what happened. All right, kiddos, see you next time.